When Lenin and the Bolsheviks seized power in 1917, they inherited a country with religion firmly embedded into its culture. This was a problem, for the Bolsheviks, just like Karl Marx, were atheists. As far as they were concerned, organised religion had no place in a communist society. In January 1918, Lenin and the Bolsheviks issued a decree that focused on the economic foundations of the church. Specifically, the decree ordered the confiscation of all assets belonging to the church, including church buildings. Supplementary decrees then banned the teaching of religion to children. Throughout 1918, the Red Guards broke into churches and monasteries and plundered objects of value. In some areas, they lynched priests and attacked religious processions. According to communist sources, which may or may not be entirely truthful, 687 people were killed during these attacks between February and May 1918. The civil war between the Red Army and the White Army then became the primary focus of the Bolsheviks between 1918 and 1922. But Lenin was still determined to bring an end to organised religion. The civil war and the policy of war communism that ran alongside it resulted in a terrible famine throughout Russia. And the Bolsheviks used this tragedy against the church. This idea originated with Trotsky, who suggested that the church should be required to surrender all objects of value on the basis that the wealth procured would then be used to assist those suffering from the famine. This was followed by an official decree in February 1922. As the forceful sieges got underway, crowds of locals tried to resist the Red Guards. A notable example took place in the town of Shuai, a textile town in the northeast of Moscow, where a group of civilians managed to fight off a group of armed soldiers. Some Bolsheviks, aware that their purge against the church was highly unpopular, wanted to stop these acts of plunder. But Lenin overruled them and said the following in relation to the incident in Shuai. It is now and only now when in regions afflicted by the famine there is cannibalism and the roads are littered with hundreds if not thousands of corpses that we can pursue the acquisition of church valuables with the most ferocious and merciless energy stopping at nothing in suppressing all resistance. Trial of the Shuai rebels who oppose help to the starving should be conducted with the maximum swiftness and end with the execution of a very large number. The greater the number of representatives of the reactionary bourgeoisie and reactionary clergy we will manage to execute in this affair, the better. Many members of the church were put on trial for resisting the Bolsheviks. Though it's hard to know the precise number, it is believed that around 8,000 people were executed or killed during the 1922 anti-church campaigns. From an economic point of view, the anti-church campaigns were a disappointment and though the Bolsheviks claimed the church wealth would be used to help the starving, very little, if any, of the money was put towards assisting victims of the famine. It's important to note that both Christianity and Judaism were under attack. In the case of the latter, synagogues were desecrated and Jewish organs of self-government were removed. Then, towards the end of 1922, Atheist organisations, especially a communist youth organisation known as the Komsomol, carried out campaigns to discredit the celebration of Christmas and other holiday festivals. Bands of youths paraded through major cities dressed as priests and rabbis, shouting blasphemies and singing chants. In Moscow, a group of pro-revolutionary youths chanted, We need no rabbis, we need no priests. Beat the bourgeoisie, strangle the kulaks. In some cities and towns, theatrical trials mocked Christianity and Judaism, ridiculing the idea of God and St. Nicholas. According to historian Richard Pipes, it's hard to assess the exact public response to the assault on religion, but generally speaking, based on eyewitness accounts, the Bolsheviks' anti-religious campaigns only intensified religious feelings amongst the population. Despite Lenin's best efforts, churches continued to be filled with worshippers throughout the 1920s. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to like the video if you found it useful and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with my content. Other than that, it's goodbye from me until next time.